All right, we're gonna do a, a detailed breakdown on this video right here. Um, when this came out about two months ago, I, um, I noticed something kind of right away um, that I wanted to take a look at and break down and I thought was a really cool uh, technique. Something I wanna add to my game for sure. It just, it screams efficiency. And it wasn't kind of as the time went by and this was out for a bit, uh, I noticed a number of people were grabbing this video and kind of doing their own breakdowns on it and they were pointing to something that is a good thing to go over. They talk about the top game, actually what the the thumbnail that it shows for the video itself. They, they kind of, this is what they talked about, this um, what I call double shoulder control or S mount um, variant or whatever. Uh, a lot of people were pointing out how cool that was and like uh, there's a new S mount and stuff like that. Um, but this has actually been around forever, a um, long time. I've kind of always saw this as really the only combative, combatively effective way to do arm bars at all from a mount, is this kind of pressure double shoulder control system. But that wasn't as interesting to me as what I'm going to show you. And it's, I think, the main point or the, the coolest thing it's about this video. A big project for work, um, just as soon as you get the coolest thing about this video and what to pick up from this little tidbit from Gordon Ryan, I think what he was really focused on in this particular uh, session was, and just in general, I think this is an approach for him anytime he's grappling with a guy um, who's relatively his size or smaller, uh, is he employs this, um, I don't know what's the, what's the best word for it. It's a Casoto sweep that he does, and uh, the way he works at it here, it just perfectly displays why it's effective, how he works at it, what he's looking for, and also what's really cool is you get to see a guy, the guy he's up against, who is really sound. Um, he adjusts to it, counters it, so you get to see a counter for it, and then you get to see how. The move itself uh, as a concept is like everywhere, right? So it's really cool. We're going to go through it. Um, again, this is Gordon Ryan shows relentless top pressure. But I'm telling you, the thing to get out of this video isn't so much the pressure. There's obviously great stuff to learn from that. But it's the sweep that he does, the Kosoto sweep. Um, Deyashi Harai, you could maybe call it. It all depends on what angle you're coming from but it's a Kosoto, like small outer sweep. All right, so let's take a look at it. He likes this um, to over tie when you get uh, a single collar tie on him. Um, I think part of the reason he likes that against guys that are relatively his size is because it allows him to get the pressure behind their shoulder that lets him kind of push them into the sweep um, but we'll go into it. Um, also, he can kind of get away with it. You'll see here he reaches out for the singer collar tie, and he loves coming with the over tie over and getting that grip on the back of their head from that because it works so well with the sweep we're going to look at. Um, so he likes to do that. Anyway, when they get solid connections, you'll see it. He's already doing it. Like, he's already setting it up, what we're talking about. So you'll see... On this grip here, as soon as he gets the overtie hook, he's gonna get pressure to bring him forward and behind his shoulder and behind his head and bring him forward and get him to step this inside leg forward so that he can sweep it. And as you sweep it, you pull or drive over and pull and you get just an easy, super effective sweep. Um, so you can see he tries it here and he, he misses, it's not there. <clears throat> but here he has it again. Guys grabbing over it. He comes with that over tie, tries to pull him again. He, his, I don't know if you saw it there, but his uh, teammate obviously has rolled with him a lot. I think he's been used, uh, Gordon has been using this on him a lot because he already felt it. He already is adjusting in his feeling that he's trying to do it. So, um, you can see him pick his leg up on this second attempt. I'll move him, 
and watch to fix his leg up because he feels it coming. So that tells me that this guy is savvy. He is, uh, he knows about it and um, he knows counters to it. But all right, anyway, we're gonna move with it. Trying to snap him, trying to get him moving a little bit. Now here, you're not gonna see much of it from this position where he's got the elbow on the inside. I'm telling you, he likes to work it when he cut. And it makes sense. You can come over all of the grip that you're coming around when you get that over tie. It's behind them. It's behind their shoulder. Right now, he's not behind his shoulder as much. So he doesn't have... He can pull him towards him or snap him down. But he can't move him out at that angle to get him to step that leg. So there's not... He doesn't really have the sweep. He, there's other stuff he'll look for from this grip. <clears throat> And what allows him to run this game so effectively is his phenomenal single leg defense and his beautiful sumigeshi for like worst case if someone does get a good single on him, he just turns it into a sumigeshi every time. So that's one of the things that lets him play this game. As Soon as he gets any kind of grip behind the shoulder, he's gonna put it into effect. He's already doing it. He's already moving them into it. He moved them into it again. Now that will be the reoccurring theme is when it fails or when the guy really starts to react. And um, when the guy really starts to react to the sweep by by moving his opposite grip back inside, he'll anticipate that, he'll shuck that grip, and he'll enter deep for a knee tap or kind of double leg scenario. So that's his uh, whole game that he plays in this top, at least in this uh, session here, is he'll work behind your head and your shoulder. He tries to get to move you towards that direction to step that inside leg and get that sweep. And if you react enough to it by bringing your opposite arm in to post or grip, he's going to shut that. He's going to go inside and look for the knee taps or the single legs. So you can see it right here. He does that. He shucks it and goes for the knee tap, single leg. And that'll be a recurring thing throughout this whole thing. And it's so efficient. And then it even plays like the approach itself plays into the ground game. And you'll see how it plays out. got the behind grip now he's got an underhook there it is again the single leg defense is what lets him play right? he's so good at it there's just nothing there he's got his head buried there's nothing there yeah once his head was buried he just came around the other thing that's freaking unbelievably awesome about Gordon Ryan is the way he transitions from like defensive uh takedown defense straight into a guard passing position the the takedowns themselves are just moving to a guard passing position like he moved into headquarters the takedown itself was him moving into headquarters it's like crazy he's so good at that anyway you're gonna see top pressure here He has a deep understanding of underhooks and what they're really about, about closing that space in between their elbow and just really occupying it, not just getting your arm under their arm. I I don't like that he plays the seatbelt game, but whatever. Jiu-Jitsu, that's what he's doing. There, okay. So it's the same move that you see him applying on the feet the whole time he just applies it on the ground and ends up with a perfect sweep like uh and getting this guy down to a, his hip like he gets up 
He just does the same move, gets his weight to come forward, the legs in front of him, and kicks it out. It's the same sweep. So efficient, so effective. It put him down into a, an open position that he could easily attack. You know, he's around the hooks in. Now this guy's got a tripod, and he's going to do it again. He's going to do the same thing again. It's so efficient, I'm telling you. That's the story of this whole thing, is the Kosoto sweep. The way you can come around, make it put their weight forward, take the weight off this, and just sweep it right out every time. That was just a spiral ride, really put the pressure on that front shoulder, dropped him down. Trying to, this hook game, combatively, again, I have my qualms about it, but this is jujitsu, man. And this is definitely the right game to play for jujitsu if you're good at it. So he plays this game where he gets behind your shoulder and he understands that if he has a deep cut on your neck, but he also is behind your shoulder and can lift your shoulder up, then he's got you. That's a head and arm choke. That's all those, the only thing you need for a head and arm choke. You don't have to be at some, it's not always about being in front of them from the side. As long as you can bite into that side of their neck and then lift their shoulder up to butt cut off the other artery, you've got a head and arm choke. So he'll play that um, on your back. He'll play that head and arm game and just take that choke anytime you give it to him. Anytime he can bite into your neck on this side and then lift your shoulder on that side. Just cook them a little bit here. This is an underhook, by the way. Look how uh, far he's got his elbow jacked up. Super effective. Now that's wonderful. Like, there's a story here too. This probably isn't the best video to go into detail about it, but there's a story here too about how mount is only really effective when you have an underhook jacked up. And this beautiful thing he does here, where he uses the grip of an Americana to just enter into solid head and arm control to create a solid mount is just so butter to me. Like, let's go back a step. You'll see here how he's just extending this arm and exposing this elbow. And then he just uses the, all of his body weight and pressure on this arm to easily expose this grip, this Americana grip right there. And then, you know, someone that doesn't understand control as much would just want to try to finish with this, but there's no sound, um, there's no sound position at play here to finish this, especially since it's so high up his body. So he just uses it as a control to get his head involved and wrap up the head and arm. And once you have a head and arm from any kind of a passing position, you can easily drive it into mount because it lets you, your, your control over the hips, let you extend your person to where it opens up this entire left side of, or excuse me, yeah, the left side of the opponent's body. It's just gonna get so open up and extended that he can easily push his knee into mount, right? So let's look at that. Get the grip. He pulls his head into it, and he's totally okay with that. So he just drives his hips over and takes them out. Because of the extension, because of the extension of this arm so high up, and now again, this head and arm position just lets him slide straight into that choke I was talking about before. He's gonna get a bite on the backside of that neck and he's gonna, watch him, watch how he moves upward and moves his shoulder up. The focus is to move upward and lift his shoulder up into his neck. Yeah, and it's done. It's done. That head and arm choke is available from so many angles, just like a triangle is available from like, you have like inverted triangles and backside triangles and all that. The head and arm choke is there just as much. You just have to understand that you gotta cut the side off and then lift that shoulder up. 
from the back to drive it into the there into the neck all right There it was, that movement right there. He's looking for it again. He's looking for the sweep. He'll start, you'll notice too, he'll start with that uh, lead arm down to get you to take a collar tie so that he can get that over tie grip. There it is again. So this was cool because he just gave him the underhook on purpose so that he could use the over tie or the, the, over, the wizard to create that same backward shoulder pressure to get the movement he wants. Boom. He gets him to step and it's done. I love it. I just love how efficient it is. Like the guy's getting savvy to it. So he's like, okay, I'll take it. He already got him to take the step and he starts to move. And you'll see how from the overtime, he slips the grip up and comes up here to the head and the lat where he wants to grab so that he can get that backward pull to throw down. And so efficient. Now, this, the efficiency of the sweep itself, I want to point out, this guy obviously is freaking awesome and has a great guard, but look how he just walked around it and just took a dominant position, a dominant passing position, because it's so demoralizing to go from engaged and on somebody and just they just do this efficient little nothing move and then you're on your butt. It's just he had to mentally recover from it and the time, in that time he was mentally recovering, Gordon just walked around and took the dominant position or dominant angle. And look, just sits into a neon guard. Look, just sits into a pass. <laughs> it's crazy. That sweep, man, it's so good. Like, what a, what a good thing to master. That's what, dude, that's my going to be my focus now. Ooh, that sweep is what I'm looking for. So here he's just gonna cook him with a nasty cross face. Great popper position. This is, you have the same, he's kind of settling into it here. It's the same thing can happen. You can get pressure on their, uh, the right side of his neck right now with your bicep and then dry, use your pressure to drive his inside shoulder up into his neck on the other side. And you can get a, a choke there just as easy. It's the same head and arm uh, fundamentals. But he's just gonna cook them. Lifts him and tightens it. That's just taking the spine out of alignment. That's good. Lifting the head up and just dominating the head like that. That sucks. He's smothering him with his bicep. Just melts past him because of the pressure. There we have the mount. He pushes that on to the side. The guy's gonna butt now. Again, he's gonna do the same stuff. He'll take like the Americana type grips and gift wrap type pressure. And I, he's going to do the same stuff. Move that past that arm, get on the inside of it, and start working on head and arm triangles again. Yeah, the guy, the guy took his elbow inside and he immediately dropped on it and started to attack. He's working the arm in. He grabs the guy's own wrist so he can't grab his. Oh, he's got him flattened out too, man. There he goes, the arm's inside. Now he's gonna bite it and he's gonna put the pressure upward to lift the shoulder. He didn't get behind it enough. He's gonna readjust. The shoulder's starting to lift. The guy's starting to freak out. He thinks maybe I can do something with the legs. It doesn't matter. Now the pressure's all going forward. He's in the right place. He's probably gonna get it. See if he readjusts or he just sticks with it. Yeah, felt like he had it. That's an underused angle of the head and arm too. 
an underutilized angle for sure, but super effective. So I think this is the counter I was talking about. This guy's been savvy. He's been swept enough. He's tired of it. He's going to almost bait Gordon to do it and then counter him. That, so he tried to bait him with a, uh, by tucking the leg and then going after his, uh, going after the sweeping leg to grab it for a single leg. But Gordon is so good with the defensive against your leg attacks that, like, it was almost futile. Like, he stuffed it right away. Um, but this cat realizes that and he does a different approach next time. Anyway, you got the same pressure here, same pressure happening. The same game happening. Working this head and arm angles, the gift wrap type pressure. It's brutal. Just keeps going over. The same Americana type entry, he's going to use it. Oh, he gave him the inside elbow, so he just went straight to double unders. That's so efficient, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh. So yeah, once he gets you tucked in this high and your elbow's tucked up this high, he's going to go to that S mount. And it's he brings the head with that's the difference. That's what a lot of people don't get about the S mounts. You have to bring the head with it cuz that's what really lets you dominate and really lets you compress them and compress their uh like fold them like toothpaste right there at their uh rib cage. <clears throat> you can see him touching his ribs. It's just so much pressure. Alright. Again, he's moving him into the sweep. That kind of took a long orbit around the sweep to kind of, but you can't keep that up. I think he's going to bait him again, and then he does his own uh, counter sweep. He did it on the back side there, on the other leg, but it was, it was kind of just a feint. You see him scoop a single. This guy goes double. Again, his his sprawl and his his uh, uh, defense against leg attacks. Oh my God, he just punishes you for it. Look at that, straight in the mouth. Because this guy took that grip. He grabbed the the grip on Gordon Ryan. Gordon Ryan realized it and just used it to extend him and drive into mount. Again, he's already got the deep grip. He's already doing the shoulder pressure. He tucks into his neck more on that side, and then he's already got the good shoulder pressure on top. Done. He's going to keep at it. He's going to keep attacking with the same sweep. This other stuff is just faint. There it is. Try it again. There's the counter. So he... Been doing it to him all <laughs> session long and he finally realizes okay i got a counter with my sweep of my own lifts the leg sweeps the back leg gets him now here's here, this is an awesome little concept here um so yeah he okay this is perfect instead of controlling his hips he opted to go up to the high grip to try to climb onto the back. But you 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 want to control the hips and get your body there first and then re-grip. Like trying to reach and then pull yourself is just gonna be so tough. I don't I don't think it's that game isn't gonna work. You can see here, like this space now, there's nothing because he's taking this route, there's nothing controlling this inside hip. So I think. Let's see how it plays out. Yeah, he just, he's able to stand up. He's still got that space, that dominant space on the inside. He's controlling it. He reaches for the leg. There's nothing there, man. Nothing. Oh, and I don't, that was brutal. He got squashed up like a bug. I don't know what he was even going for there. Some kind of sacrifice sweep slash throw um it can't have been a double that he was going for because why would he shoot a double from well who knows who knows let's keep going 
Man, he's just wrapped up right now. And again, in the transition, Gordon finds the dominant passing position. He's so good about that. He's so good about that. Speeding normal. Putting that pressure on. This, this butterfly hook can't do anything. He's got this leg triangle in. If he wins, if he wins the underhook, so the battle up top, this is over. He's probably gonna take that far side underhook. I think he's got it. I think that's why he went for the mount. Yeah, he had the underhook. Again, jacks up the elbows, goes straight to S mount, lifts that head with it. And there isn't, again, what's cool about this as far as arm bars, and it's why the, it's the only way you should go for an arm bar for mount, is there isn't a defense. You know all the arm bar defenses that you think about. They all involve, you know, this, being able to grab, the, the being able to extend the elbows out and grab, it, and that you use the tension of your elbows pulling against each other, like the tension of your grip pulling against uh, against it to maintain the grip, to have something. When you squeeze the elbows together and compress everything together, there's nothing to grab for defense. There's nothing there. So you can take the inside arm, the outside arm, you can move this arm out this way and crank. You can move this arm out that way, out that way. I would, uh, a lot of times when you get this S grip right here, a lot of times this arm's kind of hanging out here and you literally can just take your uh, hand on this side and just push that arm out this way and hyperextend the elbow on that side. Like, there's there's no defense to the arm bars here. So whatever's there, you just take it and you just move into it. And you want your hips to pass that way over their body. You don't want to fall back. Do not fall back. <laughs> anyway. So now you'll, we'll see what he's done with it. We've had Gordon working this Kosoto uh, pressure and sweep the whole time. We've had this guy start to get savvy to it and already Gordon's starting to switch into what I was talking about er back, back earlier. Twice he's done it since we reset where the guy's brought the post in on this side. He's trying to shuck past it and go for the double. So he's really working that into play now. There it is, tried it again, tried to re-sweep again and then he hit the shuck. So, perfect. Whoa, whoa, let me, what's going on? Why can't I go backwards? There it is. So let's, let's, let's look at that whole sequence. That's really cool. Kind of brings it all together. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. So he gets the sweet pressure, shucks the hand, tries to level change and get inside. That's like a faint. I don't think he's looking for much there. Again, the sweet pressure, tries to shuck, tries to level change, go inside. I think that's more of a faint. Here comes the sweep pressure, counter sweep, misses, shucks, hits it. <laughs> ah, the knee tap. And again, straight into a strong passing position and stuff the guy wrapped up a single leg X. Good stuff, man. That's such a cool sequence. That friggin' um, that Kosoto pressure sweep and then Kosoto pressure. If they're bringing that post, you shuck it, go in. Knee tap. Really cool, really efficient. I think that's a story. And that Kasoto is everywhere. That understanding of 
getting behind that uh, behind that hip and dominating that hip. You can pass in but in behind them, behind their back, sweep them when they're trying to get up from the, like the turtle and tripod positions. It's so effective. It's so it's just an overall understanding of that Kasoto angle is like awesome. And I'm just gonna be focusing on it for now on. Um, that's it. That's what I want to show you. I hope you can take something from it. I hope you like it. Slender Man out.